Okay, everyone, we are ready to begin with the second part of the online training. Uh, please, Alexander, do we have you with us on audio and video? I'm here. Let's see if we can. Great. So just uh, activate your video. I see it there. I will switch it on. So, everybody, we'll continue with the second part looking at the 931 contactless wheel aligner standing behind me right now. Uh, Alexander will shortly uh, introduce it to you and we will do again a full wheel alignment with it together uh, with the dummy car we have standing on it uh, together live on your screens as well. Second. Okay. So, hello again everyone. Let's see if we can continue. Okay, there we go. And you are on screen and you are free to share your presentation. Go on. Okay, perfect. If I can. And let's see, now everyone should see it. Hopefully. So, X931. It's a first no touch contact aligner launch. It's a contactless system that accurately measure all the values for performing the wheel alignment, including toe, camber, caster, kin pin, and thrust angle. It has uh, shows the real big value through cameras, high speed cameras, and uh, laser uh, image processing technology which gives uh, we'll go into it later gives a uh, perspective of measuring the wheel really accurately and, and, and fast. It increases the work efficiency in workshop to work with it. It makes it it's really easy, nothing to put on the car and so on. You basically drive up the car and uh, put in the car details and it's pretty much you're ready to work. The greatest advantages, it has no targets, nothing that can you have to put on that can be put on wrongly and so on. Less things that can go wrong. No clamps, nothing that touch the wheels. And due to the fact that you are measuring the entire wheel, apart from as with the 3D, when you're measuring from the rim and the rim horn, you're measuring the values. So here you have no need to for run out compensation and so on since you're measuring the taking the values in a different manner from the entire wheel as the car stands. Therefore there's no point, no need for a run out compensation makes it the measurement even quicker. And it's not you don't have to touch anything on the car except installing manually the, the cameras to the car. The real base. It has the cameras. You see, you have equipped with uh, sliding grooves to move it forward and back, and on the sides. Have laser that gives up a, a laser image, which in turn measure uh, the values of, of the of the rim. You can see the nice layout it creates on the rim. It's going to be clear later when we do the practical part as well. The cameras is also used, you can use to directly on the computer instead of going around, you can check. So through the cameras, if there's something wrong or not with the rims, so everything is as it should. Some technical information as well here. It is, the computer is European computer and European uh, adapted in software. Windows. And the languages are identical to the languages available for the X861. And as discussed before, if it's our need for to add more languages, we will happily look into that. Just let us know through email. The measurement parameters. Round measurement length and measure. Software interface. We will go over it more 
in detail during the practical part. But here you have it's easily shown, it's easily found, it's easily easily to get started to do a quick measurement to again show give the the client some some uh, some fact based uh, in order for him to make a decision of uh, buying a wheel alignment. The inter interface in the program. As with the 3D, you had a poss possibility to, well, as you choose the car, you had a possibility to zoom in on each value separately to better, to get a better viewing point on what's going on and to better, easier be able to, to, to change these, these values. And in the quick measurement, as we're going to go over as well in the practical, you have the possibility to first take the values and then add in the, the, the car to get the correct measurement and see the correct exact uh, status of the car in a quick fashion. And you also have a, a large priority of, of things that you can uh, put in user information. You have the possible to manage your clientele, specific cars that comes in, you can write them, sort them out. You have the possibility to see and go in and check OEM specs, put in different special cases. And, and so on report you have the possibility to change report setting and so on all this we will go over also uh, briefly during the uh, practical phase of this of this training as you know this uh, x931 comes together with uh, uh, three different types of lift it has the option it has two four four post lift it's 440 and four uh 55w and it's has from the four four tons capability which is the first one the x931 440w normal it is uh four four and a half meters long and it's capable of up to four tons lifting and this is pre-installed adjusted to for the x931 with the uh, prepared holes and 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 adjustment uh, fastening points in the lift and then they have a nine three one long any questions or anything i can yeah uh, so x nine three one l is the long one so it's instead of 4.5 it's it's uh, 5.6 meters long and it takes up to 5.5 tons and also adjusted pre-adjusted for adjusted adapted for the 931 measurement aligner some co pro components have it arrives you have two front and two rear measurement units sligos exchange board computer calibration science cabinet and the lift that is wanted that is would be preferred that goes with it depending on the customer need and also to mention the see there are possibilities in this part for other but currently these are the uh, the possibilities that we can offer at the moment this might develop in in the future in the next coming in the coming years or two uh, and this also depends a little bit of interest that we feel from the market and so on and what we can try to push forward this is, uh, we can, if you have any questions, any suggestions, we're very welcome to hear. Some uh, information, uh, ordering information from both. So the normal X31, or information, price, and the X931L, ordering details and the list price. And this, of course, this will be available for everyone after the training. Thank you. So before we start the practical course, I saw we have some uh, messages in the group. I will get to those and during uh, <coughs> Tiago is doing the, the practical uh, training. Uh, right now, anyone has any questions they want to bring up before we move on? So just info again, we unmute, we muted some microphones. So if you have a question now, please just turn your microphone on again and uh, Alexander can answer it also right. 
on the way, I saw one question in the chat. Uh, there's a question if we can install on all lifts on the market. I think I think that was answered uh, already. That uh, at the moment it's only for these three lifts and it's only uh, delivered with these three lifts. But uh, that is something that we're looking at for lifts already from other brands on the market and the possibility to uh, install on them as well. So, but for now, I would say for 2020 and probably 2021, this will be a complete product together with uh, the lift system. Any questions to Alexander? Please free, feel free to ask them. All right, we're taking them on the fly other than that. So we'll switch over to Germany here again. And we should have Tiago back in picture. And uh, at least we have where Tiago is supposed to be. Uh, please try your microphone, Tiago. Hi, hello, I'm back. Yes. Yeah, Just great. So, Tiago, please take it away for the practical training. You, yeah. We hear you and see you. All right. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, yes, we will go over the practical demonstration of the X931. So, uh, also here I will uh, go over the parts which are included in the product. And uh, on please yeah uh, on on this device it's a little bit different than on the X931 uh, 3D alignment so with the X931 you get uh, included a lift uh, in this case it's the fourth TLT 440W uh, if you order the X931L which stands for large you get the TLT 455W um, and there are some uh, details which are also different on the on the wheel alignment uh, side uh, for example, the sliding mechanism is longer to fit the bigger uh, lift, of course, which makes sense. So, uh, on the X931, you also get a computer um, computer cabinet uh, with a monitor, keyboard, a mouse, a printer, a PC, as, uh, as used to it. Uh, you get turntables from the, for the front. And since you get the uh, wheel alignment, the four post lift, you also ha don't have no issues with the sliding plates on the back because they are included into the lift. You have uh, also the um, axle lifter, the carriage lifter uh, included in the, it's okay, sound, in the lift. And you have the most important part, the four camera systems for the front and for the back. Um, yes. Uh, specifications at the customer for this device is a little bit easier. Basically, if the lift fits, you are able to fit in the wheel alignment. There are, there are no specific uh, like uh, measurements like on the dimensions which have to be uh, live on the on at the customer like on the 3D alignment. So if the if the lift fits, you can buy and sell this product to the customer. So I will now go over to the software side and uh, as you can see the structure of the software of the Nick, uh, x931 one second i will just share the software screen yes. also uh, it's uh, the structure is very similar to the x861 and um, yes so you have can i go on no? Oh. I just need one second more to find the correct screen and oh, okay. um, now it's... Ah, sorry, back. I forgot. Yes, we have to set up the split screen. I'm, I'm in a hurry, in a rush. No, it's okay. All right, so now you can see me and you can see uh, the desktop, which I'm working on. So you see the software of the X931. Uh, it looks very fam familiar or similar to the X861. The structure is very similar. Uh, so if you know our 3D alignment, or the software of it, you will have no issues uh, to work with the X931 software as well. So, you can see we have the standard measurement and uh, uh, quick measurement. On the top, you can see three different pictures of tires. Those have to be chosen before you start a wheel alignment. Three options, you have the off-road tire, the standard tire, and the flat 
fire mode. Further, you have the system settings, which is also structured very similar to the 861. You can save client information. You can save your workshop information. You can set up system settings. For example, the normal the demo version, the expert and the learner. I will put this into learner because we want, want to see all the steps which the program gives us. Yes. I think that the program doesn't follow somehow. Again, please, can you repeat? I think the, 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 the program didn't follow your- Yeah, uh, the team view is probably uh, a little bit slow, I guess, right? So, let me see. No, it's not following, actually. We yeah, it's not following, you're right. Thank you, Alexander. We will figure it out. Uh, for now, then, I will figure it out. Uh, okay, but fill in the screen for now when we so can we will continue. Uh, fill in the screen so you can make uh, the camera screen uh, as big as you need to see what we are doing. So what uh, I, I showed is the system settings. Maybe that was not picked up by TeamViewer. You have all the similar options uh, as on the X861. You have client information, workshop information, and so on. You can also check the database without actually going into a wheel adjustment program. And you have the system settings, which I talked about, you didn't see it, uh, similar to our X861 software. We try to keep it similar so customers don't have to adjust too much to new products at the moment. So, so let's say we want to start a quick measurement in this case or a measurement uh, at all you drive on the car onto the lift as usual and you loosen up the uh, sliding plates for the wheels to be free and the next step on a uh, uh, contactless machine would be to adjust the camera system to the wheel so we will show you how how you can do this on our device so you go to a camera and those cameras are movable I hope you can see, are movable to, can you see? Ah, yeah. Uh, you can move it, uh, move them to the front and to the back and you can move them outwards and inwards. And the uh, importance is that you align the camera with the middle of the wheel in the first place. And I did that on the, on the other side already. And, uh, at, and at this point, you would choose your tire type. In this case, it's a normal standard tire height. You confirm the pop-up and it will check if the cameras uh, are positioned correctly. So if you could position them good enough for the system to uh, work and uh, it's done, so it tells you that it's okay. You can click on your standard measurement. We will do the standard measurement first. You have the usual and known database from us. You choose the car. In this case, it's a Fiesta. So I will type in Fiesta and it will automatically give me some results which I can choose from. In this case, it's an uh, European Ford Fiesta. It's a 2002 model. This one, you can type in the tire uh, dimensions. You don't have to, you can still do the uh, measurement without, but I typed it in, sorry. Confirm. And here you see the instructions, what to do. So break the car and loosen up the wheel, steering wheel for the caster swing calculation. Now I will turn the wheel responding uh, <clears throat> like the screen is telling me. Ich kann es jetzt so ein Overview machen. So von hinten. So you turn it to the left, <clears throat> slowly and steady. So it's different uh, than to the uh, X861 uh, caster swing compensation. Uh, on the X931, you don't have to stop at certain levels or at certain degrees. You just have to reach 20 degrees or more, more like you have to pass 
20 degrees and then the program will tell you to go back or to the other side. So that's why also the green dot is uh, just green and not, not uh, how, would you, how do you say? It's not telling you to stop at a certain level, it's just telling you. So, good. <clears throat> After you did the caster swing, you get, oh, sorry, you get the res, uh, results. It's the caster swing. Also here, as on our other <clears throat> real alignment devices, you can double click values to zoom in. You can confirm the caster swing result. It will give you the instructions on what to do. Put the wheel straight. On the dummy, it's not that easy because you cannot really see how straight it is. So I will just keep it like that. Confirm it and you get the rear axle values. And the uh, same thing here, you would now adjust the car uh, reg uh, responding uh, based, based on the manufacturer values, obviously. You can zoom in also here to the values you want to adjust. Next is the front axle. It also reminds you again to put the steering wheel straight. Same thing for here. To confirm, you get to the overview picture. So basically, as you can see, the procedure itself is there is nothing. Uh, special to know about it. Also here, this screen is, uh, is uh, our life values, so you can still adjust and they will change on the screen, so they are not frozen in this screen. In the next screen, you get the printing setup, also structured, very similar to our uh, X861. You can save it, which I will do and show you again. You can choose the operator, in this case, it's me. You can save it, successfully saved, or you can print it instantly. And if you uh, click Escape, you get to the main menu. <clears throat> you can go to Print and choose the saved up print reports late for later. Yes. and. Um, the other main point here, or main menu, is the quick measurement. This differs a lot from, uh, or this uh, dif differs from our 3D alignment because we don't have to do a compensation. So if you click on the uh, quick measurement, it basically instantly tells you the values that are at the car at this given point. And also here you can uh, bring up the manufacturer values. Oh, sorry, I type in Fiesta. <clears throat> and they will be shown and shown what is wrong with the car without doing a castle swing, without doing a runout compensation. Also here you can print it to show it to the customer. I will now go to the system settings and show some of the modes you can choose from. So the most important one for getting started with the, with the wheel alignment is the camera monitoring. Hope you can see it very nicely. So you have uh, the upper screen which shows you what the cameras are seeing regarding the wheels and below you see the targeting on each uh, camera. So if we look at the camera itself here, on the list, you can, so basically in, in one of these camera systems, there are multiple cameras. One is looking to the front, to the target in front, but the, at the same time, the same thing is happening from the front to the back. So if I now move, this is now very difficult because I cannot show you the split screen, but if I move it like this, you will see a change on the screen on two screens. I will move it and maybe, you can see it. So you see that the uh, pictures six and eight are moving. So it's, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but the double check basically. And in this window, you can set up your wheel, uh, your camera system re uh, responding to your wheel. 
also change the brightness depending on how bright your uh, workshop is. Yes. Then you have, uh, as I told, you have the report setting also here, the different ones. They are structured the same with manufacturer values and before and after the uh, adjustment and only before and after and with a graphical design. I would put it on here. Yes. As you are used to it on our devices, you can change your workshop name and so on. You have the client management. Here you can see our saved up uh, protocol, which can be printed at any given time after the realignment itself. And this I showed already. So I think this is a good overview about the X931 for now. And uh, I hope you, I could show you something. And if you have questions now, maybe ask them. I'm sorry that the split screen didn't work very nicely. Uh, but uh, yeah. I, I see one question. I can read it out yes. here for you. So it's from uh, Yuli asking, the laser cameras are not motorized. You should do the adjustment manually to take them to the center of the wheels. That's the question. Yeah. So the question yes. if it's yes. motorized or yeah, if you I have manually. Yeah, I turn on my mic, sorry. Yes, uh, you have to do it manually on uh, our system. But uh, yeah, you have to do it manually. <laughs> That's the question. I, I just want to put in that it's even though it, it is done manually, but uh, Tiago, maybe you can show how how easily and and lightly yeah. they are moved yeah. forward and back. Just to emphasize that it, even though they are done manually, it is it is very easy to install them and it's pretty fast. Uh, That's what I wanted to add with my butt. Hmm? But uh, it's manually. But most of the times, manual things are way faster than motorized things. Because you can just go here, you have to go here, and you go on the other side. So basically, to show how fast it is, maybe you can show the screen. Yeah. Let let me put this wrongly. So the car is on the on the on the on the lift. You go to system management. You put the camera monitoring up. You go to one of the cameras. You move the cam to the middle of the wheel, go to the other one, move it to the middle of the wheel. I would go to the other side, do that, and that's it. And this adjustment from uh, uh, the inside is basically very easy. Uh, depending on what car you have, you just have it slide it in totally. And as long as the wheel is being picked up, it's OK this line will always be the same because they are pushed in at the, to the maximum. So a motorized system would be way slower and one of the key factors for the X931 is how fast you can get results. So at this point I would just click a quick measurement and we have the values at the moment. So yeah, but uh, no, they are not motorized. I think I just add to it also, of course, the front cameras will always be pointed at yes. the turntable, so the front cameras are already in place. So it's basically a matter of setting up the rear tires just aiming center of the wheel. Yeah, that's correct. Front front cameras will never be changed, really, because the turntables are not moved, not, not uh, a lot. Yes. Another questions? More questions? Maybe also some questions you now uh, have uh, regarding the 3D alignment. Any questions at all? There was one uh, question from from Cedric about yeah. it has to systematically put in the tire dimensions, and uh, this is not the uh, you don't have to put them in, but it's it's a base to you can see on the on the report in the end you will see what tire was on the car, and it's also since you have to choose between the tires, off road tires, low profile tires, or standard tires. This is also kind of confirm that, uh, that it, you've been following the right procedure. You've been putting in the right information, and doing the measurements, pretty much. And this has to be done manually, systematically, each time. Okay, but it uh, doesn't change the value on the screen uh, uh, on the contactless uh, machine. 
it, it gives you more accuracy. So if you uh, if we can do that process, you see that you will you will get uh, if we can go uh, to the uh, starting process, uh, Tiago, in the program. Standard, yes. Yeah, and then you can do the the tire. We can put in the tire dimension. We can see what happens. Just to see it at the same time. You want me to choose a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's do the same a Fiesta and then put in. So you get a calculation of the wheel dimension of the. It, it, it helps to, to make the measurement more, more correct, more accurate. Yeah. Yeah, you mm -hmm. should always type in the tire model. Also for the customer to be sure that. Uh, yes. I don't know, yeah, just to, to see in the end, because you have to do the calculations, you see the diameters and, and the, the inch, that's what is recorded yeah. from this. Yeah, the system remembers the, the last information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. About the, um, the database also, uh, is it plain to, uh, to use a uh, different uh, uh, system to choose, like with a license plate or something like this? As far as I know, maybe Alexander has other news. Uh, at the moment, it's, it's like this. You can choose it by searching the model of the car or the manufacturer, and then the, the, the year, the vehicle plate, and uh, the VIN number or something, not at this point. Maybe in the future, we don't know yet. Maybe yeah, Alexander has some other, other news. Yeah, the, right. Right now, as Tiago says, is is not possible. Normally, on on many workshops, I know they have a separate local national program to be able to get this information, since it's kind of privacy issues and concerns as well. Uh, of course, you, I I think to get the information of the car, you would like to use the license plate number, if I understood correctly. Yes, and. Uh... If you use the uh, AINSPRO uh, database, you can uh, find the, um, also the, the code of the car, the, the manufacturer code, or OEM, and you can use uh, the fast uh, search to, to find mm -hmm. directly the car model with, uh, with the with OEM. The code. code, yeah. 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 It's just similar to the questions that was brought up earlier with the 3D mm -hmm. about the WIN code. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's also how to recognize the car easier and faster. Uh, right now, as, as Thiago said, but we can look into this, if this and how to, yeah, well, if there are any solutions to this. And also to provide the, the information like the, the load that you have to put inside the car and uh, the technical information, if you need uh, technical tools to do the the for example on mercedes mercedes cars so you need the tilt uh, measurement uh, is it uh, there is a solution to to have this information we have it uh, we have it implemented uh, the yeah. the weight for example for bmw and uh, the measurement for mercedes you mean cedric right yes if i choose bmw for example yeah, so each car that has a special measurement tactics, it will the, the, the program will, will show it show yeah. that. Thousand eight standard one was. So if I confirm now, it will first tell you what to do. Oh. As you can see, this is included, Cedric. It's already implemented, and on the Mercedes, it will uh, not let you go further. I think you have to type in a value, but it, I think it doesn't show you which type of uh, tool you need but mm -hmm. normally the workshop has to know what tool they need right so yeah. but the, it's there the option is here so as you can see 68 kilos on the seats and 21 on the back and so on it's implemented is it the same on the 861 the 861 the newest uh, uh, database has it also yes i think oh. yeah yes good improvement <laughs> yes 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 it, i think yeah Thank you. Have, <laughs> thank you for, for the questions. We have 
One more question I can bring up uh, as it's been calm right now. If it's possible after a, a crash, a car crash to, uh, I don't want to see me. Uh, it could be, so the qu question is if a car that crashed before and repair come to the workshop for uh, reliably if the platform of the car changed because of the accident, do we still use, get the OEM data specs as a reference? Uh, can we make an exact alignment? Yeah, you should always use the manufacturer's value in a way. And obviously it's going to depend on the accident and what type you're going to have to do other works, uh, work on, 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 on the car in order for it to, to, to loop proper in a sense that doing an alignment, you can do either way. The question is, if it's too much of a damage, it might be crabbing on the road, like by driving straight, it will looking on either one side. But it's, it's possible, and you're still going to use the OEM uh, specs, let's say, when doing the, the alignment. I hope uh, that answers uh, answer the question so that uh, answers it. If we have any more questions right now, uh, you can go ahead and, and ask them. If not, we will move on to the uh, end, end the part. Yeah, thank you. I put Tiago back in the we picture. Have one, and any more questions are very welcome now. We have one more for the, the, the cars with larger or wider tires in the back, like fours. And well, you just follow the dimensions as written on, on the tire. So it doesn't change much. You just put in the, those dimensions. If I understood the question correctly. Uh, I think he means if you have different tires on the front and the rear axle, right? So which value you should type in the program? That's a very good question. Actually, I have no answer to that. I think if I, I'm yeah I don't know we have to check it I think. Well, I mean the, the, you you put in because some cars, for example, Ferrari as well, they, they have different sizes, so you have to put in the dimension as they are in the program. They, what can what you should pay control on and look at normally doing an, uh, a real alignment is that as long as the tires are not different in brand and different uh, specs, like they're different too too much, then it might impact, but. Yeah. If you look for cars, as mentioned here, that's pores, they are originally uh, made like this. So then you just, you should put in the dimension as, as is. Uh, the calibration can be done re remotely. We ask to have a, if you can calibrate after installation. We have S with the 3D, this is, can be done remotely, which is, gives it also a good, good uh, service and a quick uh, and easy setup for the machine. Wegen dem Radio, yeah, okay. Ah, sorry. Alexander, did you see the question there from Christoph? I, I think he meant if the uh, system needs to be calibrated out of the setup here. Yeah, that's what I what, what I answered right now. I can say it again. It's like the after installation is the same as the it's similar to the 3D. We will it's a, to make sure the calibration is 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 right. This can be do this can be done remote remotely. There is a calibration tools. There is a, a calibration frame. If uh, if it's severe uh, or the remote calibration will not uh, work, then there are a calibration tool, uh, calibration frame can be used to make sure it, it is calibrated properly. Uh, so just from uh, our side here again, in Germany. So we actually have four sold units of the 931 already, one already out and the other one are leaving the warehouse today to my information. Uh, to, uh, so how I've understood the pro process, the 861 is a little bit 
special because that one is really pre-calibrated and in 99% it's fine like that. At least for the first installation we're doing, we will do it with calibration frames. So all the values are in it. Uh, this one should probably, as a standard, be using the calibration frame also after the installation. I think that's uh, the, the answer to the question Christoph said. So for a new installation, uh, at least we will do it initially, just to be sure for this product, it comes with pre-calibrated values, but we expect a uh, calibration frame to be needed more than for the 861, which is a great exception where no calibration at all is needed. Yeah. Hope that answered the question. Yeah, thank you. So let's try to tie the, the, the bag together with some uh, summary. And then just to go over the two uh, questions that was uh, asked in the red about the diagnostic and the angle sensor, the steering sensors. As in these cases, there are diagnostic tools that are needed in order to complete this. And this goes under special equipment that is used and it depends on the car manufacturers on the car. But Luckily for, for everyone here, the launch has a perfect uh, priority of diagnostic tools to, to, to aid in this manner. We will make sure to, to give an advice of what would be the best choice that goes together with wheel alignment going forward and we can, we can send everyone this information. Uh, and so let's see if I can share. And the right slide as well. Give me one second. Okay. So let's see. Now I hope everyone can see me and my, my slides for some key takeaway points to put this, let it sink in a bit what we've been discussing this morning get things in perspective and to underline a certain approach on how to look at how to help workshop look at this machine and this product in order for increase orders. So firstly the first thing is to why do they need a product? They, they have they had they need an upgrade from CCD, they need to be able to work smoother, be able to in a better sense sell work more on wheel alignments and this every workshop start this journey by making it easier for their personnel to to use it and uh, new to wheel alignments we have the solution for a great uh, great offer to be able for for anyone to take into this growing uh, demand and growing market wheel service if they want to increase efficiently Perfect, uh, the 931 is a perfect option to make work even easier and with more ease than, 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 than before, increase output and depending on the vehicle range. So some key sell points that we push out is that it, it is a very uh, fast and fast growing market due to the, the transformation that happening towards electrical vehicles it's a low risk investment looking at the investment cost and the return on investment it's a, it, a low cost of habit to use it and it it, it gives a, a vast a large amount a large profit for those who learn to work and operate and sell wheel alignments as they should you have a lot of opportunities to sell wheel alignments anytime anything in the car the front end is changed this is the perfect opportunity and this is what we need to help workshop to understand in the end it helps the workshops to give a, a perfect uh, customer intention to keep their customers to help them in more areas and we have a highly competitive competitive price range for all these products and then so we have for both is for professional shops and the private shops, the ones that are interesting to grow, to expand their business. We have a really strong product for an amazing price. This is really hard for to, this is good, a good point to push. And we're going to go down as and remind about the investment cost breakdown 
And weekly alignment is a way of kind of thinking of investing in real alignment instead of seeing it as a cost, it's an opportunity. We're selling again an opportunity. It's a confident investment in a sense that it's, it gives you future certainty, gives you future work for certainty. Real market is something that's going to be eaten. And real alignments in the end to the private person and workshop to the private person is easy, it's something easy to sell if done correctly. So again, I want to emphasize this, put it black and white to give the cost. So daily cost, what does it cost me? And how many real alignments I have to do per week in order to repay the investment. And this is actually many of the time, well, because after doing already two, three real alignments a week, you will, many shops will see a profit. With this. So this is an easy way to break it down. And this is based again on eight euros a time, ranging after uh, was research. It ranged most from 40 to 250 euros per time, depending on the car and, and the circumstance and on the shop, professionality of the shop as well. So, but just to give the idea of how to, to think. And I think I find it really interesting to ask in the past, ask shops, workshops, how many clients they refer away because they change something on the car and they refer them away to make a real alignment somewhere else. And it's interesting that maybe so they have around three to four referrals every week and you show them this kind of principle that they would they make them understand that if they wouldn't, they would have already made money themselves. This is uh, for them to, for many people to realize that, wow, it's actually a really amazing opportunity for, for investment. And of course, I want to emphasize again, we have, we're building up a strong uh, online training capability or training in general capability. And also here, if you have any suggestions and so on, you're welcome. And here we're also trying to include, as mentioned in many, many questions during our training that how to integrate uh, real alignment and diagnostic, how we can work together real alignment and others. How this can, how we can work and make it work together. Because in the end, if you have to do a real alignment, normally in the end you're going to have to do an others as well, and 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 vice versa. As soon as you've changed something on the car, that how the car drives, this is or impacted. So trying to put this down in an easily understood manner, which can help to put uh, to bring up a value uh, for the end user and help uh, our network to, to e e easier and better serve uh, the customer. So also keep in mind the integration possibilities with these machines and how we can build to other, other uh, purchases within. The most important is to understand that they have, as soon as something is changed in the car, in the front wheel, that then normally wheel alignment and also uh, others, they work together to make sure the car is still can run safely some supporting some key supporting points from from us. We have uh, we are building up. We have a strong uh, assistance. We are available. We have the possibility to remotely intervene, remotely help. We have a, a strong product training support, which we can uh, do. As mentioned before, online trainings, webinars. We have this capability right now. We would love to utilize it in the best and cost efficient manner possible and help and boost. Uh, our people on, on, on the field and say be able to give them more uh, materials in order to, to sell it. We have training materials, they're growing. Also, if anyone can think of anything that they would think is good to include in this training, growing training materials, we are open for, uh, for suggestions. We would like to hear your, your thoughts and views. And the most important, we are always trying to be available. So, you know, don't hesitate to ask us anything. If you have any issues, we, we, are, we, we are available to support. And for going moving forward from here, seeing we, have, we are going into kind of a new area, a bit, not many of our networks are that, uh, is rather new to wheel alignments and so on. So it's really important to underline the, some key communicative points, which I feel is important for to establish to, get feedback from our network in order to improve our products and prove how we work and how we can do things. And we also like to put in 
possible surveys to understand better what the response of the customer is with our machines and how they interact, how we can make the machine better, more easy, better uh, help our the end user in the end. And how we can do going ahead is communication also when it comes to problem handling and find a quick solution. For example, when things are wrong with the liners, we would like to use in general, start always by sending the serial number so we can pass the track, the history of the machine and so on and so on. And there we can move. So this, we need all, we, we need to help each other in order to support the end user in, in, in a good fashion. In the right fashion. And obviously we are always welcome for ideas and things to improve the ideas and developments. And, uh, and this I think is important for, to be competitive on the market for the time. So uh, that's pretty much what I have uh, for today. And I hope it's been helpful. I hope it opened up some new ways to see the, the, how amazing the machines that we, we, we have available are and how competitive that they, there is. We can do a lot of uh, fun things with this machine, with this product, and push them uh, in, into the European market. Right now, if you have any questions, any thoughts, any ideas, or want to do any orders, right away, you're welcome to uh, to ask or yeah, raise your hand or uh, ask anything that comes up on your mind. Thank you, everyone. And also, my uh, if it's anything, you can write me your questions afterwards on my email address, ask me any, any questions and so on. Any I think you have been uh, very communicative during the training everyone. So thank you for all the chat questions coming in all the time also. Uh, great uh, introductions from your side, uh, Alexander. Uh, it's really cool we can have you online from Italy this way also. Um, yeah, so I think we take this opportunity to say thank you. Uh, again, and uh, Alexander, you can say the final goodbye from us. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for your support. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye.